an engine is not something delicate. Uh, it is a very violent piece of machinery. So the test end is to be able to withstand that. My name is Paul Hovey. My name is El Herrera. My name is Matt Huber. As a propulsion technician, we build the main valve components, the turbo pump uh, component, and the engines themselves. We also test them on the test stand, which is kind of abnormal for the industry. Usually you have a test team that does the testing, but we take it all the way from the beginning of the build all the way through to the end. So basically, uh, I'm in charge of all the engine integration technicians. We build and test all of the engines, including Reaver, Lightning, which are our Alpha engines, and Miranda, which is our new Eclipse vehicle engine. Vera is the second stage engine for Eclipse, which is in development as well. My role is to provide the best quality data to the engine team. That involves operations, so running the test stand, firing the engine, but there's a lot of my role that comes behind the curtains preparations for the engine fire, maintenance to the test stand, uh, lots of maintenance. I mean, an engine is not something delicate. It's a very violent piece of machinery. So the test stand is to be able to withstand that. You would come up and then curve and then go into it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Currently, we have a development engine out here. This is Lightning. So in between our flight campaigns, we always bring a Lightning and Reaver development engine out to test new components. With those development engines, it allows us to come out in between test campaigns and make improvements and see how we can iterate on the design. Every day, there's this, at least one test, depending on what we're doing. Two days ago, we had a Lightning in the test stand. And right after the test, we went to uh, do checkouts to make sure the engine is still healthy after uh, all of the fires that we did with that engine. Then we remove the engine from the stand. Then we do uh, what we call a swap over. We reconfigure the test stand to be able to test the other engine, in this case, a, a Reaver engine. Usually, removing and installing an engine takes about 20 minutes. My team is very, very good at what they do. So, perfect world, we can remove an engine, do a swap over, install a new engine, check out, and fire on the same day. Uh, this is the engine shop. So we build all engines, balance and build all turbo pumps, and also build our engine main valves in here. At Firefly, we, we manufacture about 80% of all of the parts for the Alpha vehicle. Our de engine development campaigns move very quickly uh, because of that. So. A typical engine development campaign takes years, sometimes up to five years, but with Alpha's case, we were able to develop both engines for the vehicle, our entire carbon fiber tank uh, design, and launch multiple vehicles in a five-year time span. Since everything is on the same site, it makes it very easy for us to move quickly. Uh, the engine will be built here, and directly after final leak checks and walk downs of the engine, we will take it out to TS1. TS1 is about quarter mile away down the road. All the close proximity really allows us to just kind of control our own destiny in that regard as far as getting engines ready for Alpha. We're at testing one, and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about what we have at the stand commodity-wise. If we come down this way, uh, you're gonna see uh, the hallway where we keep our uh, inert commodities. So you see these big pipes coming down. This is the nitrogen that we use. It goes through a bang-bang system that presses our run tanks. This one in particular is set up to press my rocket propellant one run tank to achieve the run pressures to be able to fire the engine at the expected pressures. Uh, and then as we keep coming down, uh, we have more inert commodities. Uh, here we have purges going to various parts of the test end. 
we're able to purge every inch of the test tent, make sure we can fight fires, we can clean systems, we can get commodities out of locations where they're not needed anymore. Uh, and just a little bit further down, we have TTEP. Uh, I haven't talked much about this, but uh, we need the three things to make fire. Um, we need fuel, we need oxygen, and we need an ignition source. This is my ignition source. So we will combine that oxygen and that rocket propellant one with TTEB. It will ignite our engine and start the whole uh, process. As soon as you see one of our hot fires, you will see that green flame coming out. That is the TTEB of fire starting the engine. And then about a second or so into the fire, you can still see a little bit of the remnants of that. We have a lot of wires in the stand too. Uh, we have a bunch of boxes where all of our wires come into one junction box and then they go to my data acquisition system. And then as we keep coming down, uh, more systems get like together. Uh, the closer we get to the engine, the run line up above us coming from rocket propellant one, the run tank, and then everything converges at the engine. It all feeds to the engine at some point or another. And then looking around the engine, you can see one of our commodity tanks. That sphere above is where we keep our liquid oxygen that we use to run the engine with. That oxygen goes through the line, through a Coriolis flow meter, which gives us a direct measurement of density and mass flow rate. Very useful whenever you want to have very precise uh, measurements that ultimately help us know exactly how much mass we can take to space in our rockets. And we count with a, a very similar system on the other side of that wall back there. You can't really see it from here, but it is another sphere that we fill with record propellant. It goes through a very similar line, through an, a very similar Coriolis flow meter, then goes to the engine, behind the engine. Those two things meet, feed to the engine, also with T-Tab, and then we can start the engine. So right now the guys have just finished leak checks. Uh, we've swapped an orifice, so we have to leak check all the joints that we broke just to make sure that the engine is leak free and ready for hot fire. So now they're taking off all the leak, leak check equipment and getting it prepared for test. Pressure, locks is pressing. Locks at pressure, a rear balloon is met. Two lines met. Upper, you missed our hot fire. Though. Working at the Rocket Ranch is amazing. It's there's something new every day. We're testing on multiple different test stands, usually in the same day. So there's always something going on. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of activity. 200 acres, six test stands. Um, this is where you really get to learn the hardware, learn the issues that we have uh, and the challenges that we face, and really just get that, that core job satisfaction. I love it here. I could not ask for a different job. This is my dream job coming out of college. I love learning new things. Uh, the test stand really tests our understanding, our knowledge of, of just the machines, the mechanisms, even physics themselves. And I just love uh, fighting all those problems and learning and coming up with a smart solutions to whatever comes at us. The test team here that we have on the engine side is like a lot of prior military, some from construction, um, and really some that don't have any sort of background experience in this field. It's just like they have the right attitude, they're excited about it, which is really the baseline requirement for us. You can come from any walk of life, um, but as long as your attitude is great and you have the excitement for this field, um, that's really what's huge for us. We can teach all the other things. The advice I give somebody if they want to work out here is, is uh, just be passionate about it. Be willing to do what needs to be done. Be excited about it. If, it, if this is something that excites you, 
You just have to go for it.